Hello everybody, welcome to the Nova Show. Today we're interviewing the maker, Packy. Hi everyone in YouTube land. Hey Packy, how are you doing this fine evening? Great, Supernova, how are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. All right, <laughs> so we're here to talk about your famous trim job. Oh. Do you have any words for the viewers before we get started? Actually, I do. I'm very sorry, very, very sorry. This particular video might seem boring, but just stick with me because if you watch, I am showing you how to make a spectacular packy finish for anyone's interior space. And we noticed our original version was getting too lengthy. So we're shaking it up and we're trying to make it more entertaining for all of you. Hi, my name is Packy, creator of Pack Rats Shack. I upcycle furniture, build out of pallet wood, finish interior spaces, and have a vendor booth for my creations. Welcome to my world. So our director tells me that <laughs> I'm the director. Our director tells me that you use Sherwin Williams Pro Classic in alabaster white for this project. That's correct. I did. That's what the contractor supplied for this particular job, and it was mm -hmm. used throughout the entire home. And which using the same paint for the trim throughout is a good way of unifying the space. Mm -hmm. And I love Sherwin Williams pro products. They're they're very good. Um, Pro Classic is not my favorite product of theirs to use though so so what's your official review official review I hate to say it's not my favorite product to use <laughs> okay <laughs> the reason being though is because it's just it, it's a tacky and it's hard to work with when you're in the midst of applying it um, it dries and it's um, cures in very very well making a very durable washable surface that's great for trim work though so it really is great for trim work so are there any additives that you might have been able to use yes there are and this particular job is the first time i used an additive okay. i guess i was kind of stubborn about it because you're like thinking of other things to sell to you know make the project more expensive but actually no i was um, convinced to go ahead and try it and they do work well um i worked floetrol and um m1 both of those to see if there's any differences both of them worked really well i can't see differences they work very well they add longevity and workability to the paint while you're applying right. it on the surface so they do help with that awesome yep He also taught me to apply the paint to the surface of the trim with a small roller and then use the brush to smooth out the paint. He also used the edge of the roller to go around the corner and onto the edge of the trim. I felt like I got too much paint onto the edge that way and wasn't controlling my line between the trim and the wall. So therefore I chose to edge in my line against the wall first 
and then roll out and brush in the front face of the trim. Everyone needs to find their best way. Some is just attention to detail and then the rest is trial and error to find what works best for you. So, Packy. Yes. What are your um, steps for painting base trim? Oh, good question, yeah. Um, actually, as I'll be able to see in the tutorial as well, mm -hmm. um, obviously it's the same as any other project for me. Okay. I'm always going to clean my surface, mm -hmm. I'm going to sand it down and get it smooth and ready, and then I'm going to clean it again and make sure there's no debris on it. So right. then once it's ready for, for painting, mm -hmm. I always, with base trim, like to go across the top edge into the wall mm -hmm. because then you got a good line there Alrighty. and so then I go on the bottom side and get a good edge along the floor Alrighty. and in order to move things along faster you can like use one of those mini rollers roll out and then you get your brush and you tie it in between the two top and bottom edges and therefore it gets the roller mark you know rollers leave yeah. a different texture behind so then it evens out all of the texture and fills in the whole surface with paint and then you just keep moving along so same all the way through awesome keep, keep going i wanted to show you close-ups of an area i had already cleaned caulked and prepped for painting here when looking close you can see the areas i filled what I'm hoping to show here is how removing all the excess caulk from the wall so that only the remaining amount is what's between the trim and the wall will give the appearance of the trim being extended straight to the wall. You don't want large clumps of caulk or a rounded edge of caulk going from the trim onto the wall, especially on square style modern trim.
right, time for another Packy Pro Tip. Oops, got some paint on the hinge. Oops. All right, folks, this is not rocket science. Always, always keep a wet, moist, just moist cloth. And all you got to do is wipe it back off and it looks perfect again. It's just a huge pet peeve of mine when I'm asked to go into somebody's house and fix everything that somebody else did wrong. And this is not hard work. It's just caring about how you leave your project when you're done. That's all. This is one of those things that you might not think is very important, but to the homeowner, it is very important. Okay, there. We just found a spot that I got earlier that I didn't wipe off. It's not hard. You can either use your fingernail or there's a little piece in there that is very stubborn because I don't have long enough fingernails. That is when having a little handy dandy flathead screwdriver on hand is beneficial. All you have to do is get in there and rub it off. And obviously it's easier when you can have another hand and have a cloth wrapped around it. Okay, let me see if I can get my cloth in a way where it's gonna work. There. Basically is what I've proven to you right here is that this damp cloth having on hand at all times is a miracle worker. Look, the hinge looks perfect. This is how we need to leave our workspace. Now we come to this section where I can show you an overview of all of the trim in the upper level. In here is the master suite and it has a lot of custom build to the uh, closet and the bathroom area. This area has been completed as far as all of the trim work. So down the hall we're passing the kitchen on the right and a fireplace nook to the left and you can see this area has a curve to the hallway and there's some particular splices that was done to the base trim that needs a little more attention. I'm continuing to prep this area for the um, painting. I have already caulked and filled all the nail holes. And then there's a laundry room and another closet area that still has some uh, prep work that needs to be done um, as different changes had occurred to the trim. I wanted to show you the bathroom after the wallpaper was installed. The professional interior finisher did an amazing job. If you look close at where the wallpaper edges meet the trim, you can imagine how this would not look as good if I had not been attentive in keeping the square edges to the trim while caulking. And here I'm wanting to show you the area of the stairs. This is a pretty cool area of the house with so many different phases that happen with the finishing. Um, here the stair installers were already in and they replaced all of the temporary stairs that were used during construction with the hard wood that you see here. Um, they will be back with the different phases of finishing them out. Um, in the meantime I went ahead and I started filling in the corners and the joints and filling in the nail holes getting ready to uh, prep this area for painting and I will also be showing you the different phases as it plays out. 
This is the stopping point of my trim work in this house. I did paint the trim in the basement, although most of it was painted before installation. So therefore other people came in and painted it after it was installed for that one coat to cover the nail holes. Here are the finished stairs after all of the painting was completed. I did two coats on the stairway, including the side trim pieces and the risers. Now you can see that the posts were installed and we are still waiting for the cables. I think that was still on back order. And there is a window in this stairway location and there will be a mantle that is installed at that area as well. Here's the follow up. It shows the complete stairs with the cables, the uh, trim underneath the treads the handrail and there was a brief glimpse of the mantle under the window. Let's work on the front door. This was a last minute add-on for me. It came factory finished on the exterior side but unfinished on the interior side which apparently the uh, homeowners could not decide what color they wanted to go with. In the end they decided to paint it the exact same color as the exterior finish. I apologize for the footage. There were many workers during this time frame and I was trying to document the different steps that I took during this process without being a total distraction.
<laughs> There's a cat there. <laughs> Did she just sit on the cat? Almost. Oh, po -po. <laughs> I'm oh. sorry, Poe. I love you. That's probably... Is that going to let me know when we're dead? <sighs> but our little director was sitting on the... Come here, buddy. Hi. <laughs> Project, yes. Uh, <laughs> Winnie! Uh, no. <laughs> Winnie! There are additives that you can use. <laughs> oh my god. Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> oh.